Hey, what's going on everybody? Today on the channel, we're going to be showing you how to install Windows 10 in VirtualBox on your Mac. This is a completely free process and a relatively easy one once you get the hang of it. So well, let's go ahead and go through this and show you how to do it. First thing we're going to need, we're going to need to download a couple of items. First off is VirtualBox. So VirtualBox is a free virtual machine software that you can download here. So if we go ahead and just hit this big blue download button, it'll take you right here and you can actually uh, just click on which one you want for your computer. So we're on a Mac today, so Mac OS Intel host, and that's something else uh, to kind of take note here. Uh, VirtualBox does not work with Apple Silicon quite yet. I think they're working on it. Um, they did have some sort of beta going, but Apparently that didn't work out right. So um, there are other virtual machine programs you can download. I believe there's a parallels uh, version that's available and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, unfortunately you have to be on Intel uh, based Mac in order for this to work. If you're on Windows though, uh, you can just click Windows and it'll work just fine. But yeah, you just want to click on this Mac OS slash Intel host right here or whichever one you want and it'll begin downloading uh, the file for you and then you just open it up like you would any other installer file and run it and all that good stuff the next thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to download a copy of Windows 10 so Windows 10 is still available to download from Microsoft's website even though Windows 11 is available now so if you just go to Google and you type in download Windows 10, there should be a Microsoft link, uh, one of the first ones that pops up. I'll put this link in the description though so you can easily access it. But all I gotta do is scroll down a little bit, you'll see the latest version of Windows 10 right here. This is 2023 update 22H2. And you just select Windows 10 multi-edition ISO. You then confirm that. And then it'll ask you to choose a language select your product language and then it'll generate you a download link now I'm getting an error here because uh, I'm using private relay iCloud and it thinks I'm in a different uh, location than the United States so hopefully you won't get that error but you'll get a little download link it'll pop up and you'll be able to click it to download um, chances are it's gonna ask to I believe 64 32 bit you just want to probably do 64 bit and the Windows 10 ISO file is a pretty decent sized file. It's probably about five to six gigabytes, I think, if I remember correctly. So depending on your internet connection, that could take a while to download, or it could be pretty quick. Once you get those things downloaded, uh, you wanna go ahead and open up VirtualBox. Now, your VirtualBox is gonna look a little bit different than mine currently does. I have been using it, obviously, and I have a few other virtual machines. Uh, that you'll see here but you're gonna see absolutely nothing uh, in this area you'll probably see like a little welcome message or something like that so just totally ignore everything I got going on here don't worry about it um, but what you're gonna want to do is hit this blue new button right here and this is gonna start the process of creating the virtual machine so the first thing I ask you for is a name so this is what's going to appear over on the left hand side that you saw uh, with mine right here so you want to make this uh, kind of a recognizable name. Uh, most of the time I just do operating system names like Windows 10, 11, XP, as you can see right there. But you want to make this recognizable, especially if you're going to have multiple virtual machine files. So um, I, you know, just make it whatever you want. You can rename it, so if you want to do that in the future. Uh, next one here is the folder that it's going to be stored in by default it's stored in a home folder uh, or your home folder on a Mac uh, same goes for your uh, Windows PCs will be installed in the C drive so that is just a good place to put it right here but you can put this file this virtual machine stuff anywhere you want to and that'll allow you to uh, move the file around, uh, even put it on an external drive or something like that. And I have several videos, by the way, that show you how to do that. So if you're interested in that, be sure to check out the channel. Now for now, we're not going to select an ISO, uh, and we're going to make sure that this recognizes Windows 64-bit. It usually does based upon the name that you type up here. 
I'm actually going to put test because I have another virtual machine for Windows 10. But you're going to hit this next button. And now you're going to do some settings here. So Windows 10 by default requires at least 2 gigs of RAM and um, just one CPU here, one core uh, CPU. Uh, the RAM and CPU can be changed after this uh, virtual machine is created. So you can kind of uh, alter that to see what works best for you. Uh, more RAM uh, might work better for you if you have a bunch of RAM on your computer. Same with your processor. I only have a four core CPU and only have 16 gigs of RAM. So um, that shows you your limitations there. But usually most of the time, two gigs of RAM is probably gonna be enough. Uh, you might wanna bump it up to four if you're able to. Uh, but like I said, this can be changed in the future. Um, so just kind of choose that right there. And then now you're going to create a virtual hard disk. So by default, Windows needs 50 gigs of storage, apparently, or that's at least what Virtual Robox recommends. I personally like to do at least 64 gigs because that's typically like the lowest storage base I've seen on a Windows 10 computer is 64 gigs it's better though if you can do over 100 gigs you know more storage is obviously better and something important to note here is this right here cannot be changed so uh, if you get into your virtual machine and you decide that this amount of storage is not enough you unfortunately can't change that so be sure whatever this amount is uh, you want it set to what you're going to need and this is going to dynamically allocate over time. So it's not going to take 64 gigs of storage immediately from your computer. It's going to allocate itself over time until it gets to 64 gigs. Now you do have the option to pre-allocate right here. I don't really recommend doing that. The only benefit to that um, is if you know you're going to use all of your storage on your computer or close to it. Uh, or your virtual machine, I should say. But yeah, I don't really see any need to do that. It does make it run a little bit smoother, so if you wanna do it for that reason, I guess you can. But yeah, it's gonna give us a little summary, and then we're gonna hit finish, and you can see our virtual machine is created. So now we're gonna go to settings up here, and we're just gonna kinda of go through these real quick. So you don't have to worry about these too terribly much. If you go under system, you can see floppy disk. We don't really need that. Uh, most of these settings are gonna be default settings that Windows 10 needs to run on a virtual machine. And as you can see right here is the RAM. So you can adjust the slider over time and determine what works best for you. Click on processor, also can see your processor right there that you can adjust. Now display over here, video memory, you wanna make sure this is all the way to the right. And if you need a little bit more graphics performance, you can enable 3D acceleration, which essentially doubles the amount of video memory uh, that you can allocate. Now that number might be higher for you if your computer is equipped with better graphics, but I'm on a MacBook Air, and it's just the basic graphics here. So, uh, But this slider needs to be all the way to the right. But other than that, that's pretty much it here. Um, everything else should be good to go. Shared folders, by the way, this allows you to uh, share a folder from your host computer with the virtual machine. So this can kind of be a little helpful um, if you want to do that. All you gotta do is hit the plus button, creates a folder, and then it'll appear in the virtual machine. Okay, so now that we have all that good to go here, let's go ahead and click on the start arrow. And we're probably gonna get an immediate error because we did not mount an ISO file in the setup or in the settings. And as expected, no bootable medium is found. So you're gonna click on this arrow right here. And chances are you're gonna go uh, to your other right here. It's gonna bring up your finder on the Mac or file explorer on Windows. And you're gonna to navigate to wherever you put that ISO file. In my case, I stored it in my downloads and I've used it recently on the other virtual machines so it actually has it right here for me. So all you have to do is click on it, where it's stored, and then hit mount and retry the reboot. And this time around, it should boot us into the Windows setup. And it's accidentally took it to my other screen like it always does for some reason. 
but this should boot us into Windows 10 setup. So go ahead and give it a second. You may have to resize your window a little bit so you can see what's going on. All right, and here we are on our first setup screen. So you can see all this stuff should be good since we already choose our language, but if not, you can change it right there. And then after you hit next, there's an install now button that you want to go ahead and click on. And by the way, if you get any pop-ups on the right hand side that says things like mouse integration, keyboard, whatever, that's just VirtualBox pop-ups. You can get rid of those. There's a little X that'll pop up on the top right up there. And that's how you get rid of those pop-ups. First thing it's going to ask you is if you have a product key. Chances are you don't, but if you do, you can go ahead and toss that in right there, but most of us don't have a product key. So the nice thing is Windows 10 lets you use it without a product key. So props to Microsoft. Basically the only thing you're not gonna be able to do is customize it. So you can't change your wallpaper, can't change any colors, anything like that, but that's fine. So you can pick any version of Windows that you want from this list here. I always just hit Pro N because um, it seems like a nice simple uh, version. Um, the inversions of Windows kind of get rid of all those extra things that you're never going to use. So always pick one of those. And then it's going to give you a software agreement. And I'm going to go ahead and read this in its entirety okay we got that done and now you're gonna have two options upgrade or custom so what we're gonna choose is the custom because we're not actually upgrading anything and you can see there's that virtual hard drive that we already created so make sure that's selected and just hit the next button and now it's going to begin installing Windows so this could take a little while uh, but we'll come back whenever we get to the next setup screen. It's probably going to restart a couple times, do some loading screens and stuff, so just let it do its thing. For setup questions, I'm not going to show this whole entire part here. There might be a couple uh, parts of the setup that I show you, but you just want to go through here, answer these questions uh, how you want them to be answered, and then once you get done with that, you should end up on the desktop. So I'll come back if there's something I want to show you in the setup process. For the setup that you might have a little question about, uh, they want you to sign in with a Microsoft account. Now you can do that if you want to. Basically what it's gonna ask you, especially on Windows Pro, uh, it's gonna ask you if you're gonna set this up for personal use or an organization. I think if you do like Windows Home Edition, it's only going to do personal. Um, but you're going to get this prompt to sign in with a Microsoft account. Now you can do it if you want to. You can go ahead and sign in. Or down here in the bottom left, it says offline account. And the offline account is like we've done for many, many years on Windows, where you just create a local computer account that is just on this uh, PC so that's what I always do I don't see the need to sign into a Microsoft account again if you want to do that you can uh, but offline account will just allow you to type your name and the password if you want it and you won't have to worry about signing into anything so that's a little tip for you uh, right there We've arrived to the desktop finally, so um, probably gonna get a bunch of random pop-ups. Just let us hit yes on that. Uh, there is one thing that we're gonna need to do before we actually start using the virtual machine, and that's install the VirtualBox Guest Edition. So this is going to allow the virtual machine to run a lot more smooth and just better overall work with kind of the virtual hardware drivers and things like that so uh, if you go up here to top under devices menu and you can go to insert guest editions cd image 
you should have the same menus if you're on uh, Windows host computer anyways once you click on that uh, we'll head down to the file explorer and once file explorer comes up here we will go to this PC and then in our CD drive we should have the VirtualBox guest editions file so we'll just double click on that and once you do that you're going to get several different things here but we're going to go for this one right here that says VBox Windows Editions and you're going to double click on that to open it up and once you do that it should open up the application it likes to hide behind the window for some reason so just close that file explorer and there you go so now what you're going to do is go through this like you would any other installer it's really nothing to change just keep hitting next and this is going to go ahead and install those guest editions uh, you might notice your screen flash and a couple other things but once this is done it's going to ask us to restart and then upon the restart it will be all good to go so we'll go ahead and give this a moment to install everything all right so we're going ahead and rebooting here now one of the main things the VirtualBox Guest Editions allows is the ability for the screen resolution to adjust depending on the window size. So uh, that's going to be one of the first things you notice is when this does boot up, the resolution will adjust to this window here. And also if you go full screen on the application, it will adjust to the full resolution of your computer as well, which is very nice. And as you can see, the screen resolution is now adjusting depending on the window size and it's doing a little bit of lagginess because we're screen recording but it uh, works totally fine when you're not screen recording but yeah that is the cool thing with the guest editions and if you go full screen on the application I mean it's like you're on a Windows PC you would never even know that we're on a Mac right now so it is pretty interesting uh, but yeah guys that's how you install Windows 10 in VirtualBox on your Mac let me know what you uh, think about this in the comments down below and whether or not you have any issues be sure to put them down below I'll try to help you the best that I can but anyways guys that's all I got for you today thank you for watching the channel as always and I'll catch you on the next video